Welcome to the Python tutorial here we will learn all the essential concepts step by step. Python is a popular, high-level programming language known for its simplicity and readability. Python is widely used for web development, data analysis, AI, automation, and more, making it a versatile skill. In this tutorial, we will cover variables, data types, operators, conditions, loops, functions, and exception handling. Each topic will have clear examples with explanations for every line of code, so you can easily follow and learn. Let's dive into Python step by step, starting with variables. Let's see what variables are in Python and how to declare them. A variable is a name that stores some kind of value like text, numbers, true slash false, or even nothing. Python makes this easy because you don't need to declare the type explicitly. Here we create a variable name and assign a string value. Strings are used for text and always written inside quotes. Age stores an integer value. Integers are whole numbers without decimals. Height stores a float, which is a decimal number useful for measurements or prices. Is underscore student stores a Boolean value, true or false, often used in decision making. None represents the absence of a value. It's often used as a placeholder before assigning an actual value. Python allows multiple assignments in one line. Here x gets 1, y gets 2, and z gets 3 multiple variables assigned at once. You can assign the same value to multiple variables at once. All three variables get 10. Python is dynamically typed. You can change the type of a variable anytime. First var is an integer, then it becomes a string. Python doesn't enforce constants but you can create variables that you intend not to change. By convention, variables in uppercase like pi are treated as constants, but Python allows changing them if needed. Swapping variables is simple in Python. Here A and B swap their values in a single line without needing a temporary variable. Let's see what data types are in Python. A data type tells Python what kind of value you are storing, whether it's text, numbers, true slash false, or collections. Python automatically detects the type, so you just assign the value. This is a string. Strings are used for text and always written inside single or double quotes. This is an integer. Integers represent whole numbers without decimals, like ages, counts, or quantities. This is a float. Floats are numbers with decimals used for measurements, prices, and mathematical calculations requiring precision. This is a boolean. Booleans represent true or false values and are used for conditions and decision making. This is a list. Lists store multiple items in a single variable and can be changed, updated, or reordered. This is a tuple. Tuples are like lists but cannot be changed after creation, they are immutable. This is a dictionary. Dictionaries store data in key value pairs, making them great for structured information like user profiles. This is a set. Sets store unique values with no duplicates and are useful for removing repeated items. Let's see what operators are in Python. Operators perform actions on values or variables, like adding numbers, comparing values, or checking logical conditions. We declare two variables to use with operators. Addition operator adds the values of A and B. Subtraction operator subtracts B from A. Multiplication operator multiplies A and B. Division operator divides a by B and returns a decimal number. Floor division operator divides a by B and returns only the whole number part of the result. Modulus operator returns the remainder when it is divided by B. Exponentiation operator raises A to the power of B. Greater than comparison operator checks if A is greater than B. Equal to comparison operator checks if A is equal to B. Not equal to comparison operator checks if A is not equal to B. Logical and operator returns true only if both conditions are true. Logical or operator returns true if at least one condition is true. Logical not operator reverses the result of a condition. Let's see how conditions work in Python. Conditions allow us to execute code only if a certain condition is true. We declare a variable age to check against. 
The if statement checks if age is greater than 18. If true, it runs the indented block. Elif, else if, runs when the previous if condition is false but this one is true. Else runs when all previous conditions are false. Let's see what are loop in Python. Loops let us repeat code multiple times without writing it again. A for loop iterates over a sequence of numbers from 0 to 4 and prints each one. For loops can also iterate through lists and other collections. A while loop repeats the block as long as the condition is true. We manually update the counter to avoid infinite loops. Now let's see what a function is in Python. Functions let us group code into reusable blocks that can be called whenever needed. We define a simple function named greet that prints a message. We call the greet function to execute the code inside it. Here we define a function with parameters a and b, which returns their sum. We call the add function with arguments 5 and 3, and print the return value. Next is try and accept in Python. Try and accept blocks let us handle errors gracefully, preventing crashes when something goes wrong. Start a try block to run code that might cause an error. Convert user input to an integer. This may fail if the input is not a number. If the conversion succeeds, print the entered number. Catch a value error, which occurs if the user input cannot be converted to an integer. Print a friendly message to notify the user of invalid input. Start another try block for code that might raise a different error. Attempt to divide 10 by 0, which will cause a zero division error. Catch the zero division error to prevent the program from crashing. Handle the error by printing a clear message. Start a try block and capture the error in a variable. Convert user input to an integer, which may fail if input is invalid. Catch the value error and store it in variable E4 details. Print the error details to understand what went wrong. Start a try block to demonstrate the finally block. Print a simple message inside the try block. Start the finally block, which always runs regardless of errors. Print a message showing that finally executes no matter what.